Today on Central Illinois on the Record, congressional concerns about local drinking water, what Sherry Bustos is saying about the issue. Plus, taxing drivers in Illinois, a look at the proposal that would raise money to fix the roads. And honoring Ray LaHood, how he's being recognized at the Peoria International Airport. Now, from your local election headquarters, this is Central Illinois on the Record. Welcome to Central Illinois on the Record. I'm Paul Cicchini. Another spending plan is heading to the governor's desk where it's expected to be vetoed. The nearly $4 billion deal would allow the comptroller to use emergency power to fund social services. It also provides nearly $2 billion for higher education. It's not without critics. Some Republicans argued on the floor the proposal does not include new money to pay for those services. Many rural schools would have little money to work with if the General Assembly adopts Governor Rauner's education funding plan. With the state budget stalemate in mind, Farmington Superintendent John Asplund isn't expecting anything at all. As CIOTR's Rachel Kay explains, a letter sent to parents says closures may become a reality for public schools across the state if something doesn't change. We have roughly right now about 320 days cash on hand. So as I said, we have a fund balance to make it through maybe next year. Farmington Superintendent John Asplund is taking a realistic look at our state budget stalemate and planning for the worst. This last year the schools were, were somewhat exempted from the, the fiscal pain that everybody else is feeling and uh, we've been told unofficially in several different channels um, that schools are not going to be exempted next year. He says Farmington is in better shape than most. If a 2017 budget isn't passed, some districts will run out of money before next school year. And so what happens to those districts? And there's a domino effect to that. And what then happens to us? We don't know. It could mean delaying the start of school, operating on a reduced number of days, or ultimately shutting down. Our big concern is that the state's just going to let this drag on, and uh, we need to take control of this a little bit, and we need to start creating some action. We can't sit idly by and just watch this unfold. The letter includes a list of local representatives Asplund wants people to call. They need to be demanding that there's a budget. Asplund also wants parents to ask for school funding reform to more evenly spread the wealth among districts. Politicians have said for a long time, we know it needs to change, we need to study it, but this isn't the right time. When is the right time? Asplund says his district has nothing left to cut. It's eliminated seven and a half positions in the past five years and already uses education funds for transportation to bus students in from as far as 30 miles away. We also don't want to be penalized because we've done the hard things leading up to now to make sure that we have a, a fund reserve for a rainy day fund. Well, it's not just raining, it's pouring, it's hailing. There's, I think, a tornado and a hurricane coming. It's a statewide problem because those students are our future leaders. And, you know, if they're not educated, you know, the, the future of the state is, uh, is not going to be what it could be. If Rauner's proposal is approved, it would give Farmington an additional $17,000, while Crevecore would lose over $95,000. Dunlap would get almost $200,000 more. State Senator Dave Kaler released a statement saying, quote, providing a little more funding for some schools while completely disregarding the disparity in property tax revenue for the poorest districts is a travesty and must be reformed immediately. The well-being of every student, every school, and every district must be taken into account, or as a state, we all suffer. Well, almost 30,000 people living with disabilities in Illinois rely on some kind of assistance. Those who help them clean and cook are fighting for a raise. As CIOTR's Kelsey Gibbs reports, direct service professionals want $15 an hour. Because of my caretaker, I get, I get to go to the movies. Robert Peterson lives with a disability. But he doesn't let that keep him down. The things that I didn't get to do when I was living in an institution. Peterson says if it wasn't for the help of assistance, he wouldn't be living an independent life. So without him and without the rest of them, uh, I wouldn't be able to get out to go to work in the morning. Shawana Murphy has been working with clients in Kankakee for 12 years, and she's only seen one pay increase. The starting wage at D for DSPs at our agency is $8.85. With two children under the age of 10, Murphy lives in transitional housing. She doesn't even qualify for state assistance. Very hard, especially when you don't get assistance from the state for like food stamps and stuff like that. I don't get that. They say I make too much money. Lawmakers want to make sure people like Murphy make what they call a livable wage. It's uh, is difficult. It's not a job that everybody can do. And the people who do it deserve to have at least $15 an hour. 
Legislators say it's been eight years since the General Assembly increased Medicaid rates to afford a pay increase. People who work hard deserve to be paid a fair wage. There is no reason that people should be working in our country and not being able to support their families. Murphy says she just wants to make enough to take care of her family. Um, with $15, it would mean we could afford for to stay in our own apartment or own, our own house. I would, would have to work two jobs and I could be at home more and wouldn't have to think about leaving the job I love. The bill cleared committee and is heading to the Senate for a vote. Lawmakers, businesses, and others sharing concerns last week about maintaining a program that provides low-income families, regardless of immigration status, health coverage at no cost. But covering all kids, which was adopted a decade ago, expires in July. Things like prevention, primary care services, screenings, all of which will make sure these children get the care they need and lead healthy lives. A proposed extension would keep the program alive until 2019. Covering all kids gave Illinois one of the highest rates of health coverage for kids in the country at about 97 percent. Everyone must explain their criminal history when applying for college, but that could change with a new proposal, and it's not sitting well with some students. Like, what if someone is a rapist, and that's a big problem on college campuses. The new bill says state colleges cannot ask prospective students about criminal backgrounds during the admissions process. Only after the admissions process could the college begin asking. At that time, the school would need to offer the appropriate accommodations for those students. A college could not repeal its decision, though, based on the information received about a student's criminal past. There's been a large outcry from many drivers after the Secretary of State's office said it would no longer send license plate renewal reminders. CIOTR spoke to the Secretary of State one-on-one. -on -one. He says the move is not meant to make money, but to save money during this historic budget impasse. I'm not the bad guy. I'm the good guy, but my hands are tied, so I have to do the best I can with the hand that's been dealt to me. Secretary Jesse White says his office saves the state $450,000 per month by not sending reminders in the mail. White says while it's a privilege to get a reminder, he does support a proposal that could help quiet complaints from drivers caught with expired tags. And there's a gentleman in the General Assembly who is introducing a bill that will say that the Secretary of State can no longer uh, penalize you for being late and that police officers across the state can no longer issue you a ticket. Uh, we support those two efforts. Secretary White told CIOTR he's not sure if reminders will be sent during the 2017 fiscal year. There's a proposal in Springfield that would tax drivers as part of an effort to get more money to pay for road repairs. It would measure how far you drive by putting a device on your car, taxing you by the mile. If passed, there would be another option, paying a one and a half cent per mile tax on 30,000 miles traveled per year. Drivers would not be charged when they're out of state or on toll roads, but some lawmakers aren't convinced. Uh, you know, there are a lot of tax increases being talked about by the Democrats in, in Springfield right now, and maybe this isn't the time to add another tax increase on. I think this, is, this idea is not yet ready for Illinois. Under this proposal, drivers would get a refund for gas taxes paid at the pump. Legislation to crack down on predatory lenders is being considered in Springfield. It's a first-of-its-kind measure to protect small businesses. It would create standards requiring lenders to determine the borrower's ability to repay the loan or advance. Chicago City Treasurer, who supports the idea, says too many small businesses are turning to lenders and suffering disastrous consequences. It provides for fairness, transparency, uh, and, and really protection for the small businesses. And, you know, we like to, to think about this as, as almost a borrower's bill of rights. The bill would also have lenders clearly disclose the annual percentage rate of a loan, fees, and the total amount of money the borrower must repay. Small fantasy sports businesses say big licensing fees could mean game over. They're trying to work with lawmakers to level the playing field. They say the larger fantasy sports companies have had success passing legislation that would shut down the little guys, and they don't want that to happen in Illinois. Small business owners say licensing fees could end up being too costly and cause people to lose their jobs. There's legislation being considered by the uh, representatives of Leslie um, to uh, license and regulate fantasy sports. And uh, the companies like FanDuel and DraftKings have been represented, uh, but we really feel that the small guys out there are not really been have not been represented very well, so that's what we're here to do. They say there are more than 70 small game operators and 150 small vendors who provide fantasy sports platforms in Illinois. Lawmakers in the General Assembly can serve in leadership posts indefinitely. Democrat Michael Madigan has been Speaker of the House for more than 30 years. 
But some lawmakers want to make sure terms like that come to an end. A proposal was written to put an eight-year limit on the time members could serve as House Speaker, Senate President, or in the minority leadership positions. If the resolution passes, it would take effect in January 2017. So Speaker Madigan could still serve another eight years before stepping, stepping down. And whoever controls the House controls every piece of legislation that goes through it. So I think it's important to have turnover in those positions with new ideas and hopefully leads to a little more cooperation if we have some new people in those positions. The bill is different from calls to put term limits on lawmakers. Leaders could remain in the Assembly when their leadership term ended. The future of the bill is uncertain. It would take a legislative leader or two to bring it out of committee, something its sponsors are not optimistic about. The Peoria County Election Commission is discussing a problem with the March primary. A record number of election judges canceled. Now they want to know why. The Commission's Executive Director, Thomas Bride, says 148 judges canceled in the week leading up to the March 15th primary. That's three times the average. Bride says there may be several factors at play, including polarizing campaigns, complex equipment, or people simply being sick. We were going to do some surveys and try to get some feedback from the, the judges that did work, which we tend to do, but also judges that didn't work, and, and try to get some feedback from them and, and go from there. Bride says he looked at the data to see if it was a partisan issue, but says there were equal numbers of Democrats and Republicans calling in. Four people who work on Capitol Hill are being called to federal court in Springfield. It's in connection with the grand jury's investigation of the spending habits of former Congressman Aaron Schock. The financial chief for the House and three other staffers wrote letters informing the chamber about the subpoenas. The letters did not mention the subject of those subpoenas. Still to come, lawmakers take a closer look at lead in the water, what's being done to keep people safe. But first, sharing tax revenue in the Twin Cities, why some say it would boost business. Bloomington and Normal could start sharing revenue from sales taxes, according to a local group. The BN Advantage Leadership Council, which includes business, labor, and government leaders, said it supports the idea if the two communities can agree on terms. So if an agreement moves forward, sales tax revenue would be split by population. About 60% would go to Bloomington, 40% to Normal. The plan would help reduce economic competition between the cities, allowing them to collaborate to bring more business to the area. People work, live and work in each of the cities, and they shop and go to entertainment in each of the cities. So for many purposes, it functions as one community. The Leadership Council says the idea is in its early stages. Any plan would have to be approved by both city councils. The city of Bloomington has a 2017 budget. Council members approved a $207 million balanced budget last week. The 2017 spending plan is up $20 million from last year and includes $10.2 million in expenses from the general fund. The city closed a $7.4 million deficit through increased revenue, reduced expenses, and the sales tax increases last fall. The budget includes $2.4 million for mental health and more spending for the city's infrastructure, passed by a 6 to 2 vote. We have to do better to identify expense management 
and we've talked about it we've talked about it and I just don't see us acting on it. The, the work had been done to uh, put together a budget that was feasible, that was reasonable, um, that moves us forward. Council members expressed interest in starting the planning process for next year's budget soon. The Bloomington City Council also supporting a Tiger 2016 grant that will be submitted by the Illinois Department of Transportation. The $20 million grant would go toward major improvements to US 51 in Bloomington Normal. If the grant is approved, the work would run from Olive Street in Bloomington to College Avenue in Normal. The overall improvements that are already done, the, the pavement's already failing in certain spots. And then in addition, it's not wide enough to accommodate any, any multimodal components like bikes and other things like that, that that are really important to our community. The council also agreed to hold off on a Tiger Grant application for another road project and approved city staff to instead pursue an $8.7 million fast lane grant to extend a portion of Hamilton Road. Still ahead, honored at the airport, how Ray LaHood is being recognized in central Illinois. But first, lead issues with local water. What leaders and lawmakers in Washington are saying about the issue. You're watching Central Illinois on the record. Congresswoman Sherry Bustos is taking water issues in her district to Washington, D.C. The Democrat is talking about what she calls alarming water test results in Galesburg that measure lead content well above the, quote, federal action level. 5% of kids under the age of 6 were positive for lead levels above the point for intervention. I say to all responsible here, it is time. It is past time. No more excuses, no more delays. We need a long-term solution to a long-term problem. The city of Galesburg believes there are around 4,700 homes with private service pipes made of lead. Busto says nearly 100 members of Congress are requesting billions of dollars for a program called the Safe Drinking Water Revolving Fund. This would provide low-interest loans to cities to replace lead pipes. The 17th District Congresswoman is also backing a bill called the CLEAR Act, which would improve how quickly at-risk families are notified of an issue. Lead in the water is also having an effect on some schools. Midland High School in Varna reported samples of well water over the limit for lead in 2014. Now, the superintendent, in an email to CIOTR, said in part, the Midland District replaced faucets in the kitchen and the water main entry in the mechanical room in 2015. The district also shut down two drinking fountains in the back of the building as well. Now, the full statement can be read at CIProud.com. There is some good news. You'll learn more quickly when your drinking water is contaminated. The state EPA and Department of Public Health changed the notification period required by law from 30 days to 10. That's how long water companies have to notify you of problems like lead in the water. A plumber in Peoria tells CIOTR lead pipes are a growing problem, but not one the utility can control. It's up to you. When we dig one up that's uh, broken or pinholed, uh, a lot of times people don't have the funds available to replace the entire water line, so then it becomes a patch. Illinois American Water says the source of water in central Illinois does not contain lead. 
It says the best way to stay safe is replacing old pipes. Well, tax day is almost here. What you need to know before the fast approaching deadline. But up next, a former transportation secretary is honored at the airport. You're watching Central Illinois on the record. The Rayla Hood International Terminal is now part of the Peoria Airport. It was a star studded event Tuesday night when the former Secretary of Transportation, Rayla Hood, was recognized at the ceremony. He was joined by the current Secretary of Transportation and the Federal Aviation Administrator. The $11 million project has taken two years to complete. Even though it's almost ready for travelers, the airport authority still has a lot of decisions ahead, including which international flights will be offered. For those in attendance, naming the terminal after La Hood seemed like an easy decision. The example that Secretary La Hood set for the whole country was that infrastructure and aviation, are it's not a Democrat thing, it's not a Republican thing. It's really all about how do we do the best for the country. And you see it right here in central Illinois. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art facility. The international terminal is the icing on the cake uh, for the terminal. and. Uh, I, I really, uh, I'm really humbled by the fact that uh, they put my name on the building. As good as he was as a congressperson and as great as he was as a secretary, he's a better person. The airport director says the terminal will be used for domestic flights this spring. Another big name in Illinois is recognizing Ray LaHood. Senator Dick Durbin congratulated the former transportation secretary. Durbin spoke about his former congressional colleague on the floor of the Senate. Ray LaHood has been and continues to be a strong advocate for Illinois and for our nation's infrastructure. This honor is certainly a fitting tribute, and I congratulate my former colleague. As Secretary of Transportation, LaHood oversaw billions of dollars in investments in roads and bridges in both Illinois and the rest of the country. Still to come, students take the state capitol, how they got a taste of what it's like to be a lawmaker. But up next, supporting students, a look at a one-of-a-kind program in District 150.
District 150 is following through on its new strategic plan, implementing its one-of-a-kind program with a new director, Derek Booth Sr., at the helm. He has the respect of um, the young people, their families, of staff, and, and he's very effective. The department is called the Office of Social Emotional Learning. Booth and his staff will focus on providing students with social and emotional support. The goal is to help them tackle problems and improve performance in class. The office will also connect kids with treatment when needed. So this will allow us uh, to develop those partnerships and relationships to connect them with resources uh, that they'll need outside of the school setting. The program has been a priority for the district's new superintendent. She says she will see better attendance, behavior, and grades after its implementation. Students will start noticing the services at the beginning of the next school year. Some high school students got a glimpse into what it's like to be a politician last week. For the third straight year, students hosted a mock general assembly. They got a chance to meet with lawmakers, Governor Rauner, and Supreme Court Chief Justice Rita Garman. They later filled several roles in a mock committee hearing to vote on legislation proposed by youth advisory students. Now, those students voted on a proposal that would give high school students an option, besides standardized testing, to enter college. Senator Jason Barrickman says events like this one expose young people to politics. You know, just because they're not old enough to vote by the law of the land doesn't mean that we shouldn't hear from them and understand what, what issues are important to them and also give them, an, give them an avenue where they can become more involved. The mock committee got a chance to listen to testimony, but the young lawmakers voted against that proposal. Well, the deadline to file a tax return or request an extension is tomorrow. Paperwork must be submitted by April 18th to avoid a penalty. The deadline usually falls on April 15th, but a new legal holiday in Washington pushed it back. If you're filing at home, experts recommend downloading antivirus software to prevent an identity theft. And that's going to do it for this edition of Central Illinois on the Record. Of course, you can stay in touch with CIOTR and me on Facebook and Twitter by using the hashtag CIOTR, and we'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of WMBD, WYZZ, or Nextar Broadcasting Group.